praise is in the faith we sing, number 226. Excuse me, 223.
worship this morning has found in your book. The Lord is my shepherd, I will fear no darkness. We will love one another as Christ loves us. Christ, the good shepherd, has compassion for all. We will love one another as Christ loves us. Open our hearts to goodness and mercy today. We will love one another as Christ loves us. Love not merely in thought and word, but in truth and action. We will love one another as Christ loves us. And our next hymn is number 408 in the hymnal, The Gift of Love. Thank you. 
our psalter this morning is the 23rd Psalm. This is the King James Version. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He made me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, if I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy God and thy staff, they come comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Today's New Testament reading comes from the book of Acts, chapter 4, verses 5 through 12. The next day, their rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem, Evanus, the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, By what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there, there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. Today's epistle comes from 1 John chapter 3, verses 16 through 24. We know love by this that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him. Whenever our hearts condemn us, for God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God, and we receive from him whatever we ask, because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the spirit that he has given us. And today's gospel comes from the book of John, chapter 10, verses 11 through 18. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because the hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will, also, they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
enviar gracias por lo que has hecho. So when you talk to someone who is an experienced builder, one of the first things they want to talk about is that all sound buildings start with a solid foundation. Our friend Galen Davis built a log home along Hayes Creek in Virginia in the early 2000s. It was on kind of a steep bank and so when they started excavating for the foundation, they struck bedrock just a few inches below the soil. As they dug further into the bank, they found that the bedrock continued as even as the slope went up. And so they had to extend and raise their foundation to follow that bedrock. Now, Galen knows that bedrock is an ideal foundation. So he poured his foundation walls on that bedrock, and it resulted in a ground floor moving up several layers from the low side of the home to the high side. His garage had a 10-foot high ceiling, but on the low side, the basement turned into a crawl space, which was only about three or four feet high. Galen promised me that when we came to visit, that was where Sharon and I would stay, in that little crawl space. <laughs> but the cornerstone is the part of the foundation that establishes the strength and position of all of the foundation's walls. It is the strongest point, and everything is built from the cornerstone. So Peter's proclamation in Acts chapter 4, verse 11, is Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders, and has become the cornerstone, is a quote from the Old Testament, both Psalm 118, verse 22, and Isaiah 28. Verse 16. Isaiah 28 says, See, I am laying in Zion a foundation stone, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. The one who trusts will not pay. Peter is using these Old Testament prophecies to explain to the elders and scribes in Jerusalem that Jesus Christ, the one they have rejected, is the cornerstone on which God will build his church. This is a bold statement as he proclaims to the leaders of the temple that Jesus, the, the promised Messiah, was with them and they missed his presence. As much as I like the image of Jesus as a cornerstone, and it is a fundamental part of our faith. Jesus is the beginning point of our salvation, a gift that comes only from God. I also like that image of Jesus as the Good Shepherd, who goes, and that goes hand in hand with the cornerstone image. John chapter 10, verses 11 through 18, Jesus calls himself the Good Shepherd whose voice the sheep will know and will follow. Now the term Good Shepherd is found three times in the New Testament, all of them in this chapter of John's Gospel. In verse 11, he promises that the Good Shepherd will lay down his life for the sheep. And in verse 14, he promises to know his sheep and that his sheep will know him. Jesus has created this image of himself from the 23rd Psalm. He is the shepherd and the Lord who is described in verse 1. He's our shepherd right now. And in these very moments of our, and those moments of our life when we need shepherding the most. The 
good shepherd makes us lie down. We get proper rest because someone who knows us is watching over us in those green pastures. Proper rest in surroundings that lend themselves, lead them, lend themselves to comfort and allow us to relax, to be nourished, and to find our own way. The shepherd is our trusted guide. Besides still waters, where it's safe for us to drink. You see, sheep can't drink from a fast flowing stream. They need a spirit to need water that's cooled up. The shepherd restores my soul. When we're down, the shepherd will lift us up. He guides us in right paths for his name's sake. The good shepherd will not leave us to fend for ourselves. Not because we're special, but because he is special. It is in the Good Shepherd's nature to care for the sheep in his flock. Jesus takes care of us here and now and forever. The Good Shepherd has taken care of us in the past, too. Even though I walk through the darkest valleys. Not if we walk, or when we walk, but because we know that there are dark valleys in our lives, He will be there and will walk with us through them. Even in those darkest valleys, we're not alone. The Good Shepherd is our companion. I will fear no evil. For you are with me. We're confident in the Good Shepherd because his rod and staff are comforting. The shepherd's rod has a gnarled club on the end of it, which he uses to defend the flock from rocks, both animal and human. But it also has a crook at the end of it to gently lift the sheep that have strayed from the path or fallen off a cliff to bring them back to the flock and the shepherd's care. Because of the good shepherd's presence, we can look to the future with assurance. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. God's goodness and love have been with us all along. We just need, don't need to worry about it being there as we move forward. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Our destiny is assured. Our present, our past, and our future are constants when we follow the voice of the Good Shepherd. So back to Peter and his proclamation that Jesus is the cornerstone on which faith begins. And in John's Gospel, the writer uses Jesus' words, uh, Jesus' I am statements, to affirm his love for his followers. It's the same kind of love of the Good Shepherd. Jesus' love continues to build on this cornerstone, our foundation of faith. And in 1 John 3 16 through 24, the author explains to the reader that Jesus' love for the sheep is what led to his sacrificial work on the cross. The good shepherd sacrifices everything for the sheep because he loves the sheep that much. And through this love, that foundation is expanded and made stronger because others in, within the flock will love like the Good Shepherd and become new shepherds in that flock. Loving like Jesus is how we will abide in his love and he will abide in us. John Wesley considered John, 1 John 3.19 to be the foundation of all religion. 
We love because he first loved us. Just as that it is the sum of all of the Christians making each of us a part of that foundation of Christian love that starts with Jesus. Loving like the Good Shepherd binds us together with all the leaders from the cornerstone and extending out to become the foundation of Christ's church throughout the world. 1 John 3.23 says, and this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he commanded us. Becoming part of the sure foundation of Jesus Christ is what we are told to do. And to do that, we have to love others, just like the Good Shepherd loved us. Jesus did all these things with Psalm 23 in mind. And he loves us that much. And we are commanded to love others with the same intensity. Amen. Would you join me then in our unison prayer? O oh God, our shepherd, our day, our land. In the resurrection of your Son, you have brought us into your pasture, guide us to your clear streams, and take the wool that I gave through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen and Amen. Would you continue with me in the attitude of prayer? Loving Good Shepherd, we bring before you this morning the families of Michael Jensen to serve his police officer, and Michael Husek, the Anadarka Sheriff, who were killed in the line of duty a week ago. We agonize over the loss of these first responders who gave their lives defending their community. We lift their families and friends and co-workers as they deal with the death of this, their father and brother and companion. We thank you for the cornerstone of faith that is Jesus Christ. Help us to become your bold acolytes, lighting the way of your truth for all to see. Help us to choose honorable paths through green pastures and still waters amidst the darkest valleys of our lives. For you are greater than all our fears, and you know how to bring us to this deep place of peace. We would ask your guidance and comfort for those we have included in our prayer list this morning. Comfort those who mourn. Heal and strengthen the sick and those who have lost their way in life. And give strength and encouragement to their caregivers as they deal with those with whom they are charged. So that all of them may know the strength and comfort of the shepherd's care. We pause now for a few moments of silent prayer to bring our personal petitions directly to God's ears. Lord Jesus, as you lay down your life for us, Touch our hearts and minds that your goodness and mercy may follow us every day of our lives. May we abide in your love and grace for all eternity. All these things we ask in the name of the Good Shepherd who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our last hymn this morning is number 529 in the hymnal, A Firm of Foundation.
our study report is in the hymnal number 666. Shalom to you.